Uh, actually, I can I can cross off these things here. Uh, and now I can talk about something that's not directly news related, but it is unique to America. Um, this might be interesting. I don't know. I don't know if you are American, S. Goodman, or if any anybody else in chat. If they are American or from Europe. If you're from Europe, you will definitely find this interesting. Um, so I'm I'm a I'm a big fan of analog horror. Uh, as are probably a lot of people. I mean, I know a lot of people are. See, I see the views that those videos get on YouTube. People uh, people like that stuff. Um, but uh, recently, there's been kind of a shift into digital horror, which is like a kind of early digital media and stuff like that and and one interesting thing that i've come across is the eas scenario um format of horror storytelling right basically like oh no uh emergency alert system you know you're you're seeing this <laughs> Ooh, very scary yeah that's right um basically like oh the emergency warning system comes on over your tv and tells you oh there's a warning about this stuff right and a lot of times it'll be some supernatural stuff but i found one that actually wasn't and it was super interesting to me for a couple of reasons and it was called ef6 um it was a tornado scenario uh where it takes place in texas where where there was a a tornado that was so severe that it had to be classified as a level above the maximum rating of EF5. Uh, it, it used all uh, text-to-speech voices, but it had various different contexts in which you would see information being delivered. There was like, a, you, you could be in the newsroom with the weather map, you could be in a car with the radio, uh, or something like that, I think. Um, it, 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 felt, it felt very immersive, despite it just being like the text-to-speech voices like vocaloids um off the burden let's go average typical um and uh it was very awesome in terms of the scope right it was like uh, oh houston gets hit by this tornado and this tornado is so bad Right? The tornado is so severe that even bunkers and safe rooms aren't safe anymore. Right? Like, uh, you know, if, if you can imagine how bad an EF5 is with more than 300 kilometers per hour wind speeds, right? Uh, then, like, I don't know, EF6 w might be, like, twice as powerful. The ability to mangle steel and reinforce concrete and stuff and tear up the ground underneath it. Basically... A storm that is powerful enough to level an entire well-developed and well-prepared city. Um, you know? And the, possibly the scariest thing about it for me was that it wasn't that far from, from something that could feasibly happen, right? There, there have been tornadoes that are strong enough to physically dent, like, steel, like basically safe rooms that are built out of the same stuff that a modern tank would be built out of right tornadoes are fucking scary let's uh throw a pokeball nice i'll name you venus the writing is also really good to such an extent that like even the text-to-speech voices of like uh, the characters felt real. They felt like real people. It, it somehow, like... <laughs> Venus... Yeah, that's true, Joker mode. Um, it, like... It's hard to convey urgency with a monotone robo-voice. But somehow they did it. And I am so glad that they did, because holy hell. It, you know, it deserves to have that kind of uh, urgency given to it. Um... But the, part of the reason that I've called out Europeans specifically as, as somebody who might be uh, uh, interested in this uh, is, is that um, apparently Europe doesn't get very many tornadoes, at least not especially severe ones, you know? 
Um... Do I need a potion for this? No, I don't, I don't think I do. I think I'm alright. Uh, they can happen. I've seen tornadoes happen in Europe, but usually I, I don't think I've seen anything stronger than EF2 or EF3 strength tornado happen in Europe. Which, of course, there's still the potential for some, some uh, kind of serious damage to happen there, but like... Um, in the in the US, the, the kind of tornadoes we get are, are like absolutely insane. And the reason for that, as I learned, is that there are certain climate conditions that are unique to America that actually don't exist anywhere else in the world. And those climate conditions are what produce tornadoes. So in order for a tornado to happen, especially a very powerful one, what needs to, to happen is, is a couple of things, right? You have to have a wide open, like flat area, right? Certainly that exists in Europe and Asia and whatnot. Right? So that's number one. You have to have a, a flat area, but then you have to have polar opposite climate conditions right next to each other. That is very difficult to achieve in somewhere like Europe or Asia because you have to have very warm air right next to very cold air. In the US, we have um, we have like a lot of really, really warm air that comes up from the Gulf of Mexico from the south and then Canada, really cold, really dry air coming down and the, the third thing that makes tornadoes happen is not just those two opposite climate conditions, but specifically when they run directly into each other, right? You know, front system will come through. Um, but uh, I, I think the U.S. is one of the only places in the world that this can happen at such a scale that it produces monster tornadoes when the really warm, moist air uh, is, is sort of coming up and runs directly into the really cold, dry air in the form of a front, it produces what are called supercells, a very special kind of thunderstorm where the air physically starts spinning. Like, the 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 way that uh, hot and cold air interact with each other is such that, like, they're trying to push past and mix with each other, and it literally creates a vortex. And the the, the more drastic the... The, um, the, the larger the front and the more drastic the contrast between the hot and the cold air, the moist and the dry air, you, the, 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 like, the more pronounced the spin, the harsher the winds, basically it's an amplifying factor. And that's what produces really strong tornadoes with wind speeds of two to 300 kilometers an hour, sometimes more than 400 kilometers an hour. Really, really fast wind speeds can be produced by tornadoes like that. Um, and... From what little I know about uh, the, the sort of climate that you can have in, in Central Asia, in Europe, places that ordinarily would probably be pretty good for tornadoes, they're like missing that crucial component. In Europe, you're sort of missing that massive contrast between hot air, cold air running straight into each other. Um, you know, because because the uh, the circulation of air in Europe doesn't lead to that happening very often. And of course, in Asia, in Central Asia, it's uniformly pretty dry. You don't get a lot of, uh, you know, you wouldn't really get uh, moist air coming up from Southeast Asia because it'd have to go over all, all those sorts of mountains. There's a natural barrier to that. But in America, you have like you have literally a perfect storm for the perfect storm. And so this EAS scenario that I was watching was basically like, what if we took that and then induced some implied uh, climate change or whatever to make those conditions more severe and produce a tornado so, hor so horrifying that it leveled an entire city? Um, which is plausible. There have been tornadoes that wiped entire American towns off the map. Towns of like a couple thousand people. These are not like, some of them are podunk villages, but these are not like uh, absolutely unheard of settlements, you know? Caused a lot of property damage. And in fact, it also explains why certain houses are built really quick and cheap, especially in the south and in what we call Tornado Alley, like the Great Plains region, there's a lot of houses that are built out of really unsturdy materials there. And that's because tornadoes are a seasonal event here. You know, you wouldn't really want to build a house out of bricks or uh, cement or, or any type of much more sturdy material. First of all, because it would be a waste of money because the house wouldn't last all that long anyway, right? But then also because when a tornado tears apart a house, right, a tornado would uh, of EF4, EF5 strength would be able to tear apart a, a brick house just like it would tear apart a house made of wood or siding, right? 
the only thing that you would get from a house made of more sturdy materials is more dangerous debris in the tornado. So that, that can actually do a lot more harm than good sometimes. So... Um... And of course, you can tell by the way I talk about this. I've been interested in tornadoes for a very long time. I used to read uh, meteoro uh, meteorology books about tornadoes when I was little and how they form and how they, you know, how they move. Uh, and uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about it because it was just something that I've been interested in. My, my interest has been peaked a little bit lately. And it's also, I think, one of the only things, it might be the only thing that is genuinely unique to America. You know, people talk about American as exceptionals or whatever. The only way that America is truly exceptional is the weather and the tornadoes. That is the one thing about America that you actually cannot find in any other part of the world. I have, I have, I don't think I've ever heard about an EF5 tornado anywhere that isn't America or maybe Canada. Uh, so basically, I'm proud to be American, because we have the best tornadoes, the strongest tornadoes, <laughs> the most deadly tornadoes. <laughs> uh, I don't know why, I just felt like talking about that. 